Yeah. Jan, Casey Dorr, hi. Who don't know who you are, who don't know what this is all about, why the interview yes. is taking place, why we're all together. Yeah. Uh, just, I guess, um, introduce the premise of this of this weekend. Well, we started this band a long time ago, uh, Section 8. Um, you know, we started off, I, I pretty much want to say experimental compared to anything that I've heard. Um, you know, divided by, we all, we all had our influences, it's kind of like four satellites, you know, going around a, a, a main idea. But anyway, we, we started, they asked me to join, and um, I don't think any of us expected uh, the outcome of how big the band was going to get. And, um, you know, we played strong for what, 10, like eight or nine years, eight years almost? No, probably not even. Nine. Not even? No. Well, well anyway, a good a, a period of years. Um, and, you know, we, we, we all kind of all went our different ways. Um, I know that everybody in the band continued musically in, in some kind of project or another. Um, you know, I kept going with a myriad of bands that I've been in. And uh, as of present right now, uh, you know, I got a call from uh, Mike, the bass player, Mike McClaitis. And uh, I got some good and bad news all in one phone call that uh, I mean I can get into later. But the main, the main, the main reason of the call was we were, were you know, over the years uh, after our breakup, we were constantly. I I don't know how much for these guys, but me um, being asked every time I, I would have an opportunity to talk to someone that when are you guys going to get back together? Are you guys going to get back together? Uh, are you going to do a reunion? You know, like, and there's been tons of offers over the years as well. Um, th this, you know, with Mike being on board with everything, uh, Drew and Tim being on board, you know, I, 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 you have to be crazy not to say yes. So once that was decided, you know, we kind of kept it to ourselves for a little while and wanted to make sure that everything was going to come to fruition. And, um, got together started practicing and it felt you know like kind of like putting on an you know an old shirt you know or something in it things are going together well I, I personally think we sound better than we ever did um, we did not however expect the the outpour that we have received um, we plan on doing the one show um, that sold out you know with with the whole lineup every band in the lineup is great um, and that sold out very quickly um, obviously this is going to leave people a little uh, disgruntled they can't make it uh, we decided and I don't think it was just us but I believe we speaking only for our band mind you I don't want to like <laughs> excuse me I don't want to like let out you know any other bands what they wanted or what they think because I can't tell you um we as a whole decided to do another another show. Um, <laughs> crazily enough, that sold out in three and a half hours. Once the tickets went on, they they were gone. Uh, from I don't know exactly if it's rumor or like whatever, but I've heard that no no bands have done that uh, with this venue. No bands have sold that venue out. Not uh, not European or and we're mind you, we have no label. We we've always been a self run unit. And um, I'm just happy to be a part of it, you know, like really happy to be a part of it. Something I personally wanted to see, not not necessarily just to get people off my fucking back, because I mean, you know, I, I, Tim can tell you as well, uh, you know, we, we've we worked very hard in any other the bands that we've been in. And once you, I don't know how to explain it, it's bittersweet uh, with Section 8, because what we did and then, you know, and that was over. And then, you know, I'm out here doing, uh, you know, Gunther Weasel or even, you know, Disciples back in the day or, you know, one of the bands that I've been in. You know, people would show awesome support and, and much due respect. But the question that came after, oh, you guys sounded good. When's Section 8 getting back together? And, you know, it was, a, it was like a kick in the fucking balls, dude. You know, and so in a way, you know, I jokingly say, Finally, you know, people can stop fucking riding me about it. And, you know, I'm sure the the rest of the members can say that as well. Mm -hmm. um, that was the, uh, sorry, it was a lengthy answer, but it's kind of hard to, yeah. no, my, my brain goes all over the place. So. Almost 
didn't come together. It was almost a fluke. Um, I, I left music for a while my, just to, uh, to tend to real life stuff. Yeah, you yeah. Know, your family and personal. What, what is real life? I don't, I don't get it. That's go it. Ahead. Go ahead. Real life is pain. Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. That's real life. Stuff. I mean, uh, well, you. It's funny you said that because you said you know life. Life is pain. Um, to me, one of my one of my major escapes has always been. Uh, you know, watching horror or watching, or you know, anything that's got anything to do with uh, the horror industry, I absolutely love. So, I was a cat in the way. But what? So, what was the question about horror? Like, you know, um, so, so, so um, you're not only a musician; you're also big into art, and you're big into horror, and you're big into dark. Just yeah, the darkness of reality. Yep, the dark side of life. Mm-hmm. Dark side of history. Yeah. Go into that a bit as to, I guess, where the interest comes from and what kind of art of that nature inspires you, whether it's um, painted or written or film. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess the real thing was when I was, I remember, you know, my, my mom rest her soul, like, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, a very normal child. Like, I, when most kids were playing with their G.I. Joes or things like that, I mean, I was constantly interested. I, I remember one of the the first books my mom got me when I was, I think it was like six or seven, was the big book of monsters, which was, um, you know, all the universal monsters, Dracula, Werewolf, Frankenstein, <laughs> stuff like that. And um, there was always my, I didn't really see it as a scary thing. You know, I, that's what I liked, you know. And <laughs> that pretty much started... Um, like that aspect of me getting into like like film and you know introduced into like horror and stuff like that um writing wise uh I've always I mean I was like you know 12 years old I think when I read my first Stephen King novel um I was you know pretty much due to the loss of my mother I kind of like almost isolated myself but I would like I was the kind of kid that would leave school and I'd go to the library you know and um, you know, I'm reading Nietzsche, you know, real life horror, and um, like you know, anywhere from Nietzsche to Edgar Allan Poe, which is, you know, I pretty much that's why I think I started writing between him, um, H.P. Lovecraft, uh, Charles Bukowski, uh, not so much Hunter S. Thompson though I enjoy his stuff, but um, it, it you know it really got me into a culture of, of wow, you know, like I. I did, you know, it was more of, uh, back then I was more of a fan, you know, and um, I, I've always kept like a journal um, throughout my life or things like that, and you know, I'm like, hey, I'll just try my hand at it and write, you know, and things of that nature, which uh, I do remember I wrote a short story one time, now this is way before the Columbine thing, I was in ninth grade, I remember vividly, I wrote a short story about a kid who was getting picked on in school and you know the not necessarily we didn't really have like preppies and jocks like I kind of got along with everybody but I, I just saw how fake they fucking were you know I went to a very small school like my graduating class was a hundred people and every weekend I would go to the city and catch crazy punk rock acts and like you know see the reality uh, you know seeing people getting stabbed seeing people getting shot you don't fucking forget that and, you know, you're like, yeah, I come from this little small fucking town, and I'm going this big, and and I remember I, I I can't specifically say what band it was, but I remember, you know, going to one of my first shows, and there's people just like me, a thought like me, I think, you know, um, going fucking crazy, you know, they had somewhere to put their anger, and I had a lot of that, I still do, uh, you know, and I'm looking at how much fun the bands are having and I've always been one of those guys it's like you know that looks so much fun I want to do it like why sit there and be a fan what you know if it, if it doesn't work out fuck it you know you try but right then and there I fell in love with uh, I mean predominantly punk rock my older brother got me into the metal my mom uh, got me into like the classic rock like you know Donovan the Beatles stuff like that my father was really into classical uh, big band stuff, 
and then my other, my second oldest brother was into bluegrass and blues, so I kind of had all this, you know, all this at once coming at me, and then here I am, you know, heavily interested in punk rock, hardcore, old school oi, uh, from England, you know, you know, just amazing, so I'm, you know, getting bombarded with all these things, and like trying to mash it into one is something that I've always tried, you know, what always want to be a part of, you know, I don't think I'll ever stop, so. Carving out um, one's own style is not the easiest thing to do. Oh, you're, you're damn right. You're damn right. I mean, to me, I, mean, I don't want to say, uh, you know, I don't want to come off negative, but to me today, in today's world, um, a lot of the music I hear, uh, even a lot of the film I see, right even down to the writing, uh, if you were to play me a band, you know, if you, if you were to say we were like watching YouTube right now, okay, and you picked out a band, and um, I could immediately name probably seven or eight bands who they're mocking, or and that's not necessarily, you know, there's a there's a big difference between having an influence and being a rip off artist, you know, if you you know, a big difference. So that's what I'm saying is I really truly believe. Um, I don't think any, anything, and it sounds negative, but, but it's really not. I, I don't think anything new can be done. Um, you know, you, you want to talk dubstep, I don't even call that music. Um, I, and I'm not saying it's not talent, but I, I just don't call it music, you know. Uh, anybody that, that can't pick up an instrument or, or have, show some kind of passion or talent, I'm really, have, I'm not interested, you know, and maybe that's just me, but. Yeah. I mean, to me, literally, I really think that everything has been run through the ringer. Um, like, the food is bland. You can't eat what you want anymore. You can't... It, everything's going to kill you. And that's what I think makes life fun. Because everything is out to get you. And you either embrace that fact or you, you can sit there and <laughs> self-denial all you want. But, but it, it, there's definitely bands out there that I completely love and they're pretty obscure... And that's the way I want to keep it. And one more thing, you know, I'll just get into one thing. I am grateful to be part of a music scene that at one time, like I came in at the, t to me, I came in at the tail end of punk rock um, in the in the teenage years of hardcore, not the birth of hardcore, but the, you know, the teenage years of hardcore. Metal, metal has always been there. Um, but I remember liking all this stuff because society or whatever you want to call them, but the people around me, you know, it scared the shit out of them. You don't see that anymore today. You know, you, you'll turn on MTV or whatever the, you know, fuck bullshit liberal, you know, whatever channel and you can see Lamb of God or you can see these things. And to me, once something stops, I don't know, I mean... I remember being in my first show and I was, I was I was terrified. I was like, what the fuck? You know, get my nose broke all over my face. Like, you know, and literally having to go find some hole in the wall that we could play at because we weren't allowed around bars. We weren't allowed around uh, respected, if you will, establishments. And now today, it's, it's a huge money-making industry and it's a giant vampire, which... You know, you got. Unfortunately, you got to deal with the devil if you want to play. So, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be part of um, a scene that was still scared most away, and it was cool because you made you know you know the friends you made then were solid, you know because they were there the same reason you were there, maybe not the same reason but the same mind frame, 
and it didn't matter if you were black, white, you know, retarded. It didn't matter. They were all there because that's, you know, I remember, like, having to go to shows where I remember my buddy, uh, Jay Carey, uh, we booked, I believe it was Sheer Terror, who, and I can, I can go on for hours just about that, but um, we booked them, he actually booked them, I was in a, a lot of, you know, doing a lot of the flyer work and the street team work, but I remember we literally had a, a VHS tape of what a pit looked like, and we had to show this old Polish guy who could barely speak English what was going to happen in his club, because we had done this so many times, and I mean, to an average person or a person who's not interested in that stuff, it looks like a giant fucking fist fight. And you don't, you know, many, so many shows were broken down and because of that. You know, so you kind of get the angle of where I'm coming from compared to where it is today, where it's no longer seen as a lawsuit. It's seen as, oh, how much money can I fucking make off these assholes that don't know what we're doing? So I think it went from a good thing to a bad thing, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. That's all. I mean, I, I think I'll be happy playing acoustic somewhere and in some dark bar. I'd rather do that than than really partake in any of the bullshit now. So, I mean, there are so many levels underground where people can live in scenes and scenes uh, and and you know, little enclaves yeah. of like-minded people can 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 thrive and bond over you know shared experience yeah. and shared pain. Yeah. Once you like once a certain style or a certain configuration of a style uh, bubbles to the mainstream um, there's only one level in the mainstream there's one level of crap yeah or yeah. there's you know, multiple levels of crap but oh multiple Mo- I mean it's almost like I mean you can refer to Dante's Ninth Circle or the Dante's Inferno um, this shit will never end you know it will never end it's almost entertaining at, at times you know but um I agree with you there. Just keep going. It's a spectacle. So well, I get for this. Like that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Sure Terror is supposed to release a new album this year. Yeah, I, I also heard that. I'm excited. I heard they were recording. I, I like I, I know as far as Paul goes, I like dropping names I and mean, I know him. Mm-hmm. Um I don't call him every day, I don't write him every day. You know, it, more like, Hey, how you doing? If that's how it is, you know. And um I'm I'm more of a fan, if anything, than more of a friend, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh I can't say, you know, you would think that a lot of, a lot of bands have inspired me, but Sheer Terror was, you know, people can say, oh, oh, you were inspired by Life of Agony. I'm like, to tell you the truth, no. I mean, are they a great, were they a great band? Fuck yeah. I wasn't inspired by them though. Mm-hmm. It was Sheer Terror, Typo, um, you know, some of that stuff, but I was more, I don't even consider myself a, a hardcore person, uh, you know. I don't like to put a label on things, but like I said, I grew up around punk rock, like you know, Angry Samoans, Black Flag, like the real deal shit, you know. And being at Eagles Lodge in Schenectady and seeing government issue and like bad, not bad brains, but uh, bad religion, you know, at such a small venue, and you're like, that's what that's when I pretty much decided right then and there. I'm like, I want to do this. You know, I, I have a band. We, uh, I've got a, a buddy of mine is French Canadian, and he lives in New Jersey. And uh, literally, we had a four track. Okay, um, I dabble in bass. I can't say I play very well. Um, if I'm taught something, I'll remember it. But I play bass. He'd play guitar. We'd both lay down vocals, and we had like this piece of shit digital drum set because we couldn't afford a drum set. And I was at a. Uh, we had a punk rock band called the Retards, and we, you know, influenced <coughs> Dead Kennedys, Black Flag. And later, I, w- I got into hardcore, and you know, I was always. We were both always into metal. I get into the hardcore and the um, more extreme death metal, and he went the the opposite spectrum into like really weird jazz and like like more Grateful Dead stuff. But like, one of the most talented musicians I've ever worked with, and he just never played in the band. I never understood it. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? But the, the dude will go in a studio, and he can play everything. But you know, just having good friends like that, I think, like made me want to like break out of my shell a little bit and go do it. Thank you.